Hey everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode, we're going to continue on looking at how we might program Google Search using Python. And in particular, we're going to look at how you would write a program to go from web page to web page, visiting each link in each site, and then visiting each of those links and going off onto other websites as well. So we call that web crawling. And we, we say we, we write programs called either spiders or crawlers to find, to visit web pages. So we'll remember that um, we explained how Google works a little bit in the last episode. We said Google search sends out programs called spiders to explore the web and find web pages, makes copies of those, then scans the pages for particular words and keeps counts of each word, how often it appears. And we looked at that in the last episode. And we also mentioned that another factor in how popular a page is is to do with if good quality websites point to it. So if I'm a good quality website and I have a link to a page, then that page is assumed to be a good quality page as well. And the more good quality websites that point to me, the more likely I am to be a good quality page as well. But let's think about when I'm saying a web page, what am I talking about? What I'm talking about is a file. And I think of web pages as being notepad files. Imagine you op- opened up a notepad, typed in some stuff, saved it. And instead of saving it as, let's say, page.txt, if I saved it as page.html instead, then I've got a web page. Because web, web pages are just normal text. As it happens, though, if this, this normal text is read by a special program called a web browser, and I'm sure we're familiar with them, things like Internet Explorer, Firefox, Vivaldi, or Google Chrome, it interprets that notepad file in a particular way. And what I want to look at is just some basic HTML coding. So HTML is the language, it's a markup language used to describe a, a web page. So I could go into Notepad, type in the phrase, this is a web page, as long as I don't save it as a .txt file. As I, if I save it as all files with the name .html, so page.html, if I save that, and then I open it in a browser, it'll print out the phrase that's in the web page. This is a web page. That isn't necessarily considered great practice because I'm just displaying the text that I've got. But HTML does allow us to add tags, little clues into the text file to help the browser display the information more effectively and indeed understand what the web page is about. So if I'm looking at a a web page for real, a good HTML page, the first thing I want to do is tell the browser, this page is in HTML. I I, I save it as .html, but I also want to put in inside the page itself, inside the notepad, I want to start my notepad file with open angle bracket, HTML, close angle bracket, and then whatever text I put in, the web page, I want to close the web page by open angle bracket slash HTML close angle bracket. So most of these tags work the same. Whatever tag is in between the angle brackets opening at the top, it closes using angle bracket slash that phrase again and close angle bracket. This strictly isn't necessary. The browser will figure out it's a web page anyway or try to read it as a HTML web page, but it's good to let the browser know we're creating a web page here. Now web pages typically are made up of two parts. And the first part is the head and the second part is the body. When I say the head, what I mean is information about the web page that won't appear on the uh, on the page itself, but it helps describe what the web page is about. So we, we, we identify head by saying open angle bracket head and then we put whatever header information we need to put in and then we open angle bracket slash head to close that 
Similarly for the body, it's body and then slash body. So these are two separate parts of the web page. The head I see as like an envelope and the body is like a letter inside the envelope. So let's think about that for a second. If I want to write you a message as a letter, I write the letter to you and that's in the body and that's the same as what's displayed in the web page. But to send that message to you, I need to give you information as to what, how to get that message to you and how I get that message to you is using the envelope and the envelope has certain bits of information on it. It has your address that tells you, tells the, the, the post office how to send it to you. It has a stamp that will depend on the length of the message or the weight of it, the, the value of the stamp. There'll be post office stamps depending on which post office has gone through. And there might even be a return address. So none of the information on the envelope is the message, is the letter inside it, but it helps describe what the letter is about. And in the same way, for a HTML web page, I can include information in the head part. I might say, for example, that the language that this web page is written in is in English. So then if I am running a, browse, a search and I only want to search for English pages, then I can just pop into the metadata. And if it says this web page is in English, then I can include that in the list. I might, um, in the header, I might include information about what the page is about. So I might include some, uh, keywords as to what that are in the page. I might describe the length of the page. I might describe, um, uh, what encoding language it's used and what version of HTML it's in. So it's nothing to do with what's being displayed in the browser, but it's everything to do with what what the page is about. So we'll look at examples. We'll look at something you can put in the head, and this is something easy to put in the head. I can put in a tag called title, and as with the other tags, I open it with title, and then I close it with slash title. And in between, I can put in whatever phrase I want. I'm going to put in anything you want in the blue bar. Now, this won't display anything in the browser, but it will display something on top of the browser. And let's, let's see, let's see the actual notepad file. I open notepad, I type in HTML to open the HTML page. And as you see at the end, close HTML. I start with the head and I say inside the head, I want to put in the title, anything you want in the blue bar. Close that title, close the head, and in the body, I have nothing. So if I save that as my first page.html and then open that page in a browser, as you can see, the, the browser page is completely blank. But up here in the blue bar on top, it says anything you want in the blue bar. So what the title command does is it takes whatever text is in title and it puts it up here. In, it, it puts it in the, um, in the browser itself, not in the, in the browser window. So that's something simple that the head part of a web page can do. Let's move to the body now. So what can we put in the body? Well, something simple we can put in the body is we could put in the phrase header of page and we could put the tags h1 and slash h1 either side of it and h2 and slash h2 and this works exactly like microsoft word h1 h2 header 1 and header 2 if we actually put that in notepad and then save it we can see that the h1 becomes a header 1 and the h2 becomes a header 2 again some crawlers and spiders actually use the headers within a page to understand what the web page is about so let's say it's about Python programming and the headers say the if statement, the while loop, the um, for loop. Then I'll know specifically what elements of Python are included by just looking at the H1s and H2s. That means you have to be careful and give sensible names to your H1s and H2s, of course. Now let's say we want to add in a link from this page to another page. How do we do that? 
we'll use a special tag, which is the A tag. It's it's slightly different in the sense that it opens with A and closes with slash A as normal, but it takes the A takes in a parameter or a value. And the A is href, which is a hyperlink reference, we'll say. The href is equal to http www.google.com. So that's saying, go to the link google.com. In between the A and the close A, we have the phrase link here. In capital letters, this happens. What's going to happen to the web page now is, the words link here are going to appear. They're going to be blue and underlined, and when I click on the words linked here, it'll jump to http www.google.com because what we're doing is we're specifying a link from this page to the Google homepage, and it appears when we use the word link here. So that's it in the browser. We can see it right there. It's link here is there. When we click there, it goes to www.google.com. Let's look at that in Notepad to make sure we understand what we're saying. Um, HTML head title, body head close title close head. Then in the body we've got our two headers. A href is in lowercase there. It can be in uppercase or lowercase. It doesn't matter. Uh, HTML doesn't care about that. And close the body and close then the web page itself, the HTML page. So simply by going into Notepad. Adding in these tags to a regular notepad file, we can create a web page. I think it is worth noting about the ahref tag. I can specify either a completely new website to go to. Let's say I say ahrefstarwars.com. Go to the index page there. We call that an absolute address. Or if the web page I want to go to is on the same site as the page I'm on already, and it's in the same directory, so if it's if these two pages were developed together right beside each other, um, then if I just state the name of the other page, the browser will look for the new page in the same directory as the current page is in. So we call that a relative address. It's relative to, to the current page. So if it's in the same folder, we just say that address, and then we can jump there. So that's a little basic stuff on HTML, so we understand what we're talking about when we get into crawling. That's a bit of exciting Star Wars. So we see you in part two of this.